morning, ladies and gentlemen. Bird Worry here, trusting that you are doing well. Trusting that you are doing well. So, how are you doing? This is the last day in May. Can you imagine? Last day in May. So, we are already at the five month mark. Can you imagine? And it's a beautiful day, but I, for me, it's still kind of cool. So, it's like you don't know whether to have summer clothes on or or um or still have something a jacket on or something so i just pull out my jacket out of my winter clothes that i'm putting away so here we are so we are going into e shall receive power e shall receive power don't we want the power of the holy spirit and we are in the spirit finally withdrawn the spirit finally withdrawn so, but before we go into that, my sister and brother, so this is Bird that Warrior, and if you want to go, um, want to tell your story, you know, we all have a story, whether you maybe my one issue that you had that the Lord had brought you through, and if you want to tell a story, you can go to uh, bit.ly backslash tell your story 2022, okay, tell your story, so I got my cat here. And then Ico is over there. So you guys could do that. You guys could do that. And she's always, always, she thinks that she's the queen. Okay, so let's go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day, Father God. I thank you for the animals, Father God, that you have placed in our care, Father God. I thank you for my sister, my brother, that stopped by here today, Father God. I thank you, thank you, Father God, for waking us up and clothing us in our right mind. So, Father God, right now I ask you that you will increase me, Father God, so that you will be increased. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, so let's get into the topic. And it's the spirit final withdrawn. Uh, but can you tell there's something going on in this world today? Can you can you sense it? Can you sense it? Something's going on. So we know that the spirit of the Lord is slowly being withdrawn from this planet Earth, my sister and brother. So that's why wickedness is increasing in the land. Okay? wickedness has to play all the way out for everyone to see that God is merciful. He has given us all the opportunity that we need to get our lives in order. So this says the spirit finally withdrawn. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And this is coming from Revelation 22, verses 11. Father God, as we cover this message, Father God, I ask you that you open our minds and our heart, Father God, that we will receive this message, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And it state here. When the third angel's message closed, mercy no longer plead for the guilty inhabitants of the earth. Yesterday we talked about, I shared that in Revelation 14, verses 9, talks about, the, it begins the, uh, the third angel's message. And it says, the people of God has accomplished their work. They have received the latter rain the refreshing from the presence of the Lord. And this is coming from Acts 3, verses 19. And they are prepared for the trying hours before them. Angels are hastening to and fro in heaven, to and fro in heaven. As angels returning from the earth, announcing that his work is done, the final test has been brought upon the world. And all who have proved themselves loyal to the divine precepts have received the seal of the living God. Okay, so when we talk about the seal, my sister and brother, it um, is talking about all of all, all the children of God who are keeping all of the Decalogue, all of the commandments of God, all ten, not nine. Most most churches are keeping nine. And they forget the main one, and that is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And that's coming from Exodus 20, verses 
8 through 11 talks about the Sabbath day, that God has his day that he set aside for us to worship him. And mankind, if you do your search, go to Google, my uncle Google, do your search, who changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday? And it will be clear to you that that's the system, that's the Antichrist system that Satan is using to do his bidding. I'm talking about a system here. I'm not talking about the people because a lot of people are... Uh, in those false systems have not really searched for themselves. They're listening to these false pastors. But God is giving everyone an opportunity to find out for themselves, to search the scripture for themselves, my sister, my brother. And so uh, if you want the third angel message, if you want to know about more of the sealing of God, you can read uh, Exodus 20 uh, verses 8 through 11 talks about we all have to be uh, be keepers of God's commandment, all of his commandment. And also, uh, the third angel message, like I stated before, is coming from Revelation 14, and it starts at verses 9. And it goes on. Then Jesus sees his intercession in, in the sanctuary above. He lifts his hands and with a loud voice saying, It is done. And all the angelic hosts laid off their crowns as he made the solemn announcement. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Revelation 22 verses 11. Every case has been decided for life or death. So there's two uh, options. We're either going to be on the lifestyle, meaning on Jesus Christ's side, or we're going to be on the side of Satan, and that's death. And then we talk about the um, the life and death. We're also talking about there's two resurrections. There's the first resurrection of the righteous, and then this, there is, and then that's the, the, the resurrection of the righteous. Those are the ones that have, will have power, because God said he will change us, will change us, um, will have a new body. And then we also have the resurrection at the dead, and that, that those will come back after a thousand years. Uh, the Lord will wake them back up and then give them their final final reward. So uh, we as Christians, we need to be in the first resurrection. When Jesus comes back the second time, we want to be in that resurrection. We don't want to be in the third resurrection when Jesus comes back not the star resurrection, when Jesus returned the third time. So when Jesus comes back, that will be the second time, right? And the righteous will go with him, okay? And then you also have, he's coming back on the third time to give, after a thousand years, to give the the wicked their final uh, reward, okay? So there's two. So we have to be, be, uh, be able to decide for ourselves, which camp are we, are we uh, listening to? Or what voices are we listening to? Are you listening to the voice of God being on the life side? Or are you listening to Satan on the death, death side? It goes on to say, Christ has made the atonement, atonement for his people and blocked it out their sins. The number of his subject is made up. The kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heavens. And this is coming from Daniel 7 verses 27. Daniel 7 verses 27 is about to be given to the heirs of salvation. And Jesus is to reign as king of kings and lords of lords. When he leaves the sanctuary, darkness covered in inhabitants of the earth. In that fearful time, the righteous must live in the sight of a holy God without an intercessor. The restraint which has been upon the wicked is removed, and Satan has his entire control of the final impenitence, meaning those who are unrepented. Satan will have this, his control over all those individuals. God, long suffering, has ended. The world has rejected his mercy, despised his love, and trampled upon his law. The wicked has passed the boundaries of their probation. The Spirit of God, persistently resisted, have been at last withdrawn. And if you have the book, hold on, it's 
Wendy out here. If you have the book, The Great Controversy, The Great Controversy, and this is coming on from page page 60, no, no, uh, Great Controversy, page 613 and 614. Great Controversy, six, pages 613, 613 and 614. And that's where you would where you would read, the wicked has passed the boundaries of their probation. The Spirit of God persistently resisted has been at last withdrawn. My sister and brother, we're getting ready for the final battle of hurt history. And as we are preparing for the battle, my sister and brother, how can we prepare? We have to be standing on the Word of God. We have to be studying for ourselves, not listening to these pastors. There's a bunch of them talking this false stuff. I'm talking about you as an individual have to be studying the word and uh, study the word of God for yourself. Uh, don't let anybody say this or that. You have to study, study, study. And then when you study, then you have your root grounded in the truth. And wherever the wind blow, like the wind's blowing right now, you'll be stand firm because you have studied for yourself. And no one can tell you other, um, nothing else than tell you the false. So the false information will drop off. You'll be able to see, to discern the truth from the falls right away because you have taken, taken time to study the word of God, okay? So like I state, when I come before you, my sister and brother, I'm encouraging you to study the word of God for yourself. Yes, when you go to church, you take a note, Take a notepad and you're taking notes so you can go home and do the research for yourself. Because not everybody that stands in front of you, I don't care if it's a male or female, uh, you got to examine everything that's coming out of their mouth. And also you have to know uh, their lifestyle. And a lot of people, like I stated before, has this, has this spirit of I do as I say but don't do as I do. And that is not of God, my sister and brother. Whatever we say, we have to be living that lifestyle as well. So it's not like today I'm going to be this way and then tomorrow I'll be another way. No, as a Christian, Christianity is a lifestyle. Being an ambassador for Christ is a lifestyle, my sister and brother. So whether you have the cameras on you or the cameras off of you, you're still supposed to be living uh, in that example that you're an ambassador for Christ. So it doesn't matter where you go, you're still following that lifestyle. I'm an ambassador for Christ. I represent the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God eats a certain way, uh, dress a certain way, uh, speak a certain way, watch certain things and certain things they will not do. So we got to be reminded, my sister and brother, if we say we guard children, then we need to go all the way. Like I stated before, Satan only need a piece of you in order, one, one little piece of you in order for you to be lost. But God requires the whole hundred percent of me, of you, in order for him to save us, in order for him to save us. What do you want? Say hi. Okay, see? Say hi. Say hi. Okay, now go. Oh, my. Go. Okay, so my sister and brother, we just got to be very mindful and doing what God has called us to do. Would you leave that alone? No, go. Go, go, go. And do what God had called us to do. So with that, my sister and brother, let us continue studying and remain faithful to the end. It's too late for you to be straddling the fence to thinking about, oh, well, you know what? I am not quite sure. What are you not quite sure about? Are you reading the word of God? What are you not quite sure about? Whether you should go to church on Saturday or it should be Sunday. I already told you, go do your own research. Sunday is the false day of worship. Straight out. It's the false day of worship. God says, remember the Sabbath day from creation was always the Sabbath day. And from creation all the way to eternity will forever celebrate the Sabbath, my sister and brother, because that's what, that is God's days. Okay. So like I say, I'm not, you don't need to argue with me because I do not argue about scripture. I just know, I just know beyond a shadow of a doubt 
that the Sabbath Saturday has always been Saturday. It will never be changed. That is always God's day. Now you need to go and do your own research and see why you go to church on Sunday. And there's no scripture that can justify it. And there's no scripture. There's no scripture. No scripture. If you go to uh, Luke 23 and like the last, like the fifth of one or something like that, and you start reading about when Jesus uh, died. It state that it was uh, preparation day and the Sabbath drew on and the women went back home because this it was the Sabbath it was the Sabbath and they said that Jesus rested in the grave according to the Sabbath and he rose what day so he stayed in the grave he died Friday he stayed in the grave Saturday and what day did he rose he rose on the first day of the week and that's Luke 24 verses 1 so how in the world could Sunday be the Sabbath? Mm. There's no scripture. That's not, that's not even biblical. No biblical grounds on that at all. From Genesis to Revelation, there's no way you can find that. But there's individuals that have not learned or have not um, taken the time out to study. So God is delaying his coming because someone someone one of my brothers or sister have not gotten the full understanding so he's giving them a little more time to get it together and then my sister my brother then then jesus will come then he will come but he will not delay forever my sister and brother he has a timetable that he will fulfill everything that happened in the bible was a timetable god has his own timetable and if we look at everything that's going on in the world my sister and brother man is trying to take control and man the wicked man are trying to take control but you know what god also has his people here that's proclaiming the last message to a dying world state for you babylon babylon is falling and it's a false system and god is calling you out of that sunday stuff to come into his movement come into his banner and the banner is remember the sabbath day i am not saying everybody that goes to church on saturday will be saved that's not what i'm saying i'm saying those who are rooted and grounded because there's more than just going to church on saturday that save us we have to have a love for jesus and doing what our father tells us to do in everything that we do so our home life has to be in us in a, such a way that jesus can come any day and uh this, the holy spirit i should say can abide in every area of your home and if you are one of those people that he cannot you cannot invite him to all any areas of your uh, home then there's a, there's an issue so there's stuff that we need to do in order to you for you to correct that my sister and brother so we just have to be remain faithful until the end so get ready get ready jesus is coming soon let us bow for prayer bow for prayer Father God, I thank you, Father God, I thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this wind that's blowing, Father God, you're blowing all the impurities from off this central valley, Father God, so I thank you. I thank you for my sister, my brother, that stopped by here today, Father God. Father God, I know that this was not a popular message father god but it's a message that each individual need to take very seriously because it's, it's based on our life and our death father god so father god i thank you father god for giving me the the wisdom and the understanding and the and, and allowing you father god to take full control father god i thank you father god for hearing i thank you for answering in jesus name amen and amen Okay, my sister and brother, so if this was a blessing to you, can you do me a favor? Can you, um, you know, share, share, share? You can follow me over YouTube under Burdell Warrior. I have a wealth of information there for you as well. And it's all kids friendly, kids friendly, kids friendly, kids, kids friendly. My sister and brother said so the hour is late. If you look around and what's going on on this planet, my sister and brother, this is not our home this is not our home we are here to demonstrate the love of jesus everywhere to, everywhere we go to invite someone else to say take an opportunity to invite them to to show them the love of jesus so that they too will make a decision to follow the lord so i'm on my grandma duty and you can hear my grandkids in the background and so with that my sister brother i love you i love you my sister and brother and i want all of us to be able to celebrate in heaven and how we can, how we were going to be able to do that we have to be doing 
what God called us to do right now, right now. We got to be living the life now. We cannot live the life later. We need to be living the life now. Because later, somebody said, well, later, tomorrow, Brother I do it tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. Because when tomorrow comes, it will be today. So tomorrow really never comes. So the, the state says, if you hear, he said, if you hear my voice, hearken not, heart, you know, harden not your heart. You need to take a decision, make a decision now. Now, 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 because you never know what's going to happen later. So my sister and brother, I hope and pray that you made your calling and election short. And for those of you that have supported me and are helping me grow my YouTube channel and my Facebook, um, you know, send me Facebook um, messages. Send me Facebook requests. I, I'm, I welcome those. And also for those of you that have, like I state, helping me grow my YouTube channel for purchasing my book, giving me donation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And if you would like a copy of my book, you can go to B-I-T that L-Y backslash spiritual warfare 21. And the second book is B-I-T that L-Y backslash. And it's the number 15 compelling reasons 2022. So thank you so much, my sister and brother. And for those of you that has a testimony and you want to, um, to, to make it into a book, you can, um, you reach me at, you can register at B-I-T that L-Y backslash and tell your story 22 i think ten, tell your story 22 or yeah something like that so thank you so much my sister and brother i love you appreciate you but before you go let us do the four four hugs four hugs remember hugs is very important because it helps um build your immune system you know we have to build our immune system especially with all the stuff that's going on right now right so let us do the four hugs here we go one, two, three, one more, four. I tell you, it's nothing like a hug. There's nothing like a hug. So my sister, brother, I love you. I appreciate you. Until tomorrow, be blessed and take care. And I'm praying for you. I am praying for you and your family. I am praying for you. I got you guys on my prayer, prayer 